So the big news today, the Giants had their press conference and everybody got a look at Joe Judge, who uh, looks like a football coach, closely cropped hair, a little bit from the Joe Girardi school, wore a blue suit, nice tie, white shirt, uh, the suit fit, unlike when Ben McAdoo was introduced about four years right. ago. Um, the the eyes, eyes were straight. The eyes were straight, <laughs> unlike uh, uh, the Jets head coach, Adam Gase. So all things considered, uh, a, a pretty impressive performance by Joe Judge. He came off as very rigid, very weird, strict. Weird tie choice, by the way. Uh, dark, dark tie. Black tie with the blue suit. That's it's okay. If it's a weird look for that event, though. I'm just saying. Okay, good. I'm glad you uh, interrupted me to say that. Sorry. Um, I will say this, though. He comes off as a hard ass. Intentionally. And, well, I mean, I, th I think that's what he is, Peter. He's a football coach. He has all the football cliches down. And I've always thought this. It's hard to be a hard ass without the hardware. He's done nothing. And how are players going to react to a guy who's going to be this drill sergeant without pelts? Now, I think that you become more of a hard ass when you become more successful. I think Bill Belichick has been more Bill Belichickian as the Super Bowls have piled up. Of course, up. of course. But I'm sure that Bill Belichick had a lot of that in him. But I think that guys that are really, really um, militaristic, they better get results right away. And I'm not sure that this giant team is built to get results right away. Let's see. He can do it. But I think that veteran guys are going to look at this 38-year-old guy who's talking about programs and, um, you know, teaching and stuff like that. And they're going to say, whoa, 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 what have you ever done? I think that's the one thing that I got out of it, that he's got a little bit of an edge to him that players might not like. I think well, Giant fans had to like what they saw today. Well, if you go back to Tom Coughlin, who, who that press conference reminded me of Tom Coughlin back in 2004 where he just came in and you just got a sense, like, I want to go through a wall with this guy. Well, the problem with Tom Coughlin is he had veterans on that 2004 team. He had Michael Strahan on that team, mm -hmm. who was a, a big contract guy, Pro Bowls. He had Tiki Barber on that team. He had Jeremy Shockey on that team that had been a pro bowler that accomplished some things in the NFL. And... He had a difficult time winning them over and then had to change to win yep. some of those guys over, mainly Michael Strahan, who was the only one left when they finally won the championship in 2007. Shockey was hurt and Tiki had retired. He doesn't really have that here. Mm. I mean, who's, who's the big wig, giant, big contract, has accomplished a ton that you're going to have to try to win over? Saquon's entering his third year. He seems like he's a kid that would get it, that would kind of fall in line, right? And, you know, Daniel Jones is in his second year. So, so he presumably has a relationship with Solder of some, to some degree. So who is on this team that you have to really win over? Who's the Michael Strahan, the Tiki Barber that you have to try to win over? He's going to have a bunch of young players. That, that'll help. Who are going to have no choice but to conform because they're all coming off a miserable season, right? They got their coach fired. So I don't think there's anybody on the roster who's going to feel like, well, I don't have to listen to this guy. Who is this guy? And 38's very young to us, but it's not that young in the room. He's still going to be older than everybody else in the room, right? Eli Manning's going to be gone. So I think they've got a chance to adjust to him because they're a four-win team, and there's not a lot of Pro Bowls, and there's not a lot of guys on their way to the Hall of Fame that are currently on this roster. So I think they can listen to him. Can I, uh, I haven't heard any yet. Can I hear some, Joe Judge? Sure. Let's uh, hear from Joe uh, on what he uh, wants the team to be. I want this team to reflect this area. I want the people that pay their hard-earned money in the neighborhoods of New York, North Jersey, South Jersey to come to our games and know that the players on the field play with the same attitude they wake up with every morning. That is blue collar. It's hard work. It's in your face. We're not going to back down from anybody. We're going to come to work every day and grind it out the way they do in their jobs every day. And they can invest their money in our program knowing it's worthwhile. They put a Giants uniform on. They put a Giants hat or jersey on. That it's not representing just the 53 on the field, but it's representing their neighborhoods, their communities, and their families with the values they have instilled in their children. He addresses the fans that ask, well, who are you? Well, maybe I can explain that a little bit better, but instead of saying, who am I? By telling you what's relevant in this conversation with being a coach of the New York Giants, what I'm about. And what I'm about is an old-school physical mentality, okay? We're going to put a product on the field that the people of this city and region will be proud of because this team will represent this area. We will play fast. We'll play downhill. We'll play aggressive. 
We'll punch you in the nose for 60 minutes. We'll play every play like it has a history and a life of its own oh with a relentless God. competitive attitude. We'll play fundamentally sound. We will not beat ourselves. That is our mission right here. All right. Am I right, Peter? He opened I up mean, a coaching handbook, and he's just spitting out coaching cliches. I know, I'm, I'm sorry. My job is to be honest, right, and just what I feel. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he could be a nice guy. Maybe we'll talk to him later, and I'll be a fraud and be really nice to him. because he's not. I've never been happier to have the Redskins had hired Ron Fair in my life. I, it, it just sounds like a kid making up football. I could have given this press conference. I could have said everything he just... We're going to be downhill and fast and punch you in the nose for 60 minutes. You're, you're talking out of your A. You're just saying things. That's cute. Well, I, I think you have to take everything with a grain of salt in the press conference because it's all going to be good. It's all going to be this is what we're going to do. You know, we're going to punch you in the face. We're going to run down. But it wasn't downhill. real. We're win. It we're wasn't real. I would have loved but, but authenticity. You gotta, but you, you have they to. asked who he was, and he goes, oh, I'm going to tell you what I'm about. No, tell us who you are, man. You're a practical no-name. We work in sports talk radio. We've never heard of you, sir. That room, people barely knew who he was. Well, and we hope to be able to get a one-on-one -on -one or a one-on-three with him, considering we have three people on the show, to get a little bit more personal with him. But it's not just what he's saying. It's how he conducted himself. I mean, he wasn't a sweaty mess. He, he looked like he was say, believing what he was saying. Oh, my like, God. High bar you're setting here, no, Don. No, I'm being out. Well, what else I got to, to go on? I don't know the guy. You I wouldn't have been able to go on the line. Words, you can definitely today. see him winning over uh, um, an interview. He's spouting all the things but, that they love. 